We're live guys, welcome to another episode of Good Morning Crypto, only here, only on Ivanotech. We are of course broken stay live straight out of Stockholm, Sweden, and we do this show each and every day at 8 a.m. Central European summertime, guys. I come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. Today we'll be discussing something very important. Today we will be discussing the psychology of markets and where Bitcoin is heading in the short term but also in the long term. I think it's very important for everyone involved in the crypto markets to understand the cycles that we are involved with. Because if you're holding crypto, if you're holding Bitcoin, if you're holding altcoins, if you're holding whatever, I mean, obviously you're very affected by the market cycles. And today we're going to discuss them in the short term and in the long term. And you will understand why Bitcoin is about to make a big move and why it's important for you to be mentally prepared. Because once again, if you're not mentally prepared, if you don't have a plan, unfortunately, you will lose money. And at the end of the day, if this video can prepare you a bit better, if this video can make you a bit smarter and make you not lose money, well, then I've done my job. Because once again, feelings is your worst enemy. We've been discussing this for so many times on, on this channel. So that is why I'm, I'm telling you once again, I'm telling you it. <laughs> <laughs> Feelings is your worst uh, enemy, <laughs> as you will soon see and as you will soon understand. So the first topic is going to be about Bitcoin price short term and long term. Then we're going to discuss uh, the SEC because we have some news about the ETF. The head of the SEC has actually made some comments about the ETF and we will be discussing that because this is also very important. Then we do have important news from World of Warcraft. Let me know guys if you play World of Warcraft <laughs> in the chat, if you have played it. I personally have not played it a lot, but you realize that when you look at the money in World of Warcraft, their digital gold, it is now seven times more worth than uh, the Venezuelan Bolivar. I mean, can you imagine that? It's really, really insane how, how these digital assets are becoming real for each and every day. The next generation really appreciates digital assets way more. And we're seeing it right now with, for example, World of Warcraft uh, gold, where, which you can also buy for real money. And it's more worth than Venezuela's currency. Really, really insane. Then we do have some interesting news about the hash rate, about being incorporated on the blockchain, basically how all the corporations in the future will have their ledger on the blockchain when it comes to who owns how much, basically the cap table. You know that when you raise money for a startup, you always have a cap table where you have all your investors, where you have all your angels, where you have all kinds of people who helped you along the way. And you specify in the cap table, for example, liquidation preferences. And liquidation preference is basically a, an instruction how the shares should be sold in which order if there is a liquidation event. So you will learn all about this. I mean, don't get worried if it sounds complicated, but this is coming to the blockchain. Guys, let's not uh, let's not um, uh, drag this uh, longer. Let's get into the content. But first of all, I want to wish everyone in the chat welcome, guys. Amazing to have you here once again. I mean, these mornings are really amazing with you here. I see Michael, I see Matthias, I see Uncommon Sense, Pramud, Crypto Tonight, uh, uh, Nublex, everyone, Chris, welcome, welcome, welcome. Be sure to smash that like up. Number two, be sure to smash the bell. Let me know when, where you're coming coming from, whether it's Africa, America, whether it's Indonesia, let, let us know in the chat. And also, guys, as always, let me know what you're drinking, because we're drinking black coffee, no milk no sugar involved. Also, before we get into the actual content, of course, we will be looking at the markets. Markets today are flat. I mean, we are in this period where it is very boring. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know what to tell you, but we are at minus 0.25%. I know everyone wants to have some volatility, let's be honest. We're kind of addicted to volatility in this space. And also you realize that volatility is amazing for Bitcoin as a whole because it gets attention and the thing we need right now is attention. We don't really need that much stability to be honest with you. Stability is good because, I mean, it, it makes trade easier, it makes transactions easier, but uh, I mean, let's be honest, people are very, very bored right now and we see it. We see it all across the, wor uh, the world, all across the, across the globe. People are not that excited on crypto when prices are still, but for trade it is amazing. Then 
we have uh, Ethereum 1.8%, almost 1.9%, uh, Bitcoin Cash 1.5%, yeah, so as you can see, very, very flat, very, very flat, and it's been like that for weeks now. Then, of, of course, we do see some pumpers and dumpers, we see Zcoin at the 17%, congratulations if you caught this pump, we see Cosmos 13%, but really, I mean, this, this, this is nothing, this is nothing to the altcoin pumps and dumps we're, we're used to see, and the dumpers today, 9% in XMAX, Metaverse 5%, so basically everything is flat everything is flat it's like you know we are in this ship we're going on this ship in the ocean and sometimes it is just completely calm waters we don't see anything and we don't see any wind we don't see any waves we're just in this boat it's completely flat and we're kind of waiting for the next for the next move and for the next step uh, also guys very important we do have our academy deal for halloween you can get full access to academy for only one dollar we will teach you programming from scratch you don't have to know anything then we will teach you programming on bitcoin from scratch you don't have to know anything and then we will teach you programming on lightning network also from scratch you don't have to know anything if you want you can continue with other courses for example ethereum eos programming but I mean, the, the thing you have to understand is that billionaires in this space are builders. It's biddlers. Biddlers are the ones that are the most successful. You look at the top billionaires in the space, they have built something. So definitely use this opportunity. This is running out quickly. And you go to spooky.ivanontech.com to enroll for only $1 to our academy and get access to all courses. Spooky.ivanontech.com. And you don't have to know anything. Also, you can get $110 for free. If you sign up to Bybit using the link below, and on Bybit, of course, you can short, you can long, you can use leverage, but be careful with leverage. You can do all of this with Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, and XRP. So definitely use Bybit, get $110 for free when signing up. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin. Let's talk about short and long-term situation. I mean, looking in the short term, we do see this. I mean, we do see our bearish triangle, our falling triangle, and some people are losing hope right now. I mean, we've been in this descending triangle for quite some time, and now people are also talking about the fact that with lower lo with lower highs, I mean, each time we're trying to break it, we're getting lower and lower. We're not able to break it, forming this triangle. Uh, people are basically saying, hey, you know what? The market is losing steam. The market is losing momentum. Meaning that there is a good side, the good chance we will go to the downside. Then you also have Alex Kruger on Twitter. I mean, this guy, I follow him a lot. You can check out Alex Kruger uh, on Twitter, and he basically says the following. The recent uh, rejections at 10.9k change, doesn't change outlook. Price is still in in the range and chopping widely. And obviously he's talking about this range right here that we're just bouncing around. And obviously everyone is super excited. What kind of breakout will we see? Will it be to the upside or downside? According to our friend Alex, his uh, directional edge right now is 50-50. So who knows? I mean, welcome to technical analysis, guys. Welcome to technical analysis 101. It can go upward but it can also go downwards. <laughs> so, this, this is kind of the situation you're in. Whenever you're following technical analysis, at the end of the day, it's, it's always like this. It's always, it can go upwards, but it can also go downwards. And basically, then you try to assign different probabilities. According to Alex, right now, we are at 50-50. And the... Yet he says that in the event of the breakout, I mean, either we break down or up <clears throat> from this triangle... He says he says that the uh, upside the upside to uh, the upside is bigger than the downside. So even if we go down, it it will not be as large of a down downward move compared to if we go to the upside and how that how big that move will be. And all in all, I mean, this is the short term, guys. Who knows? Who, we man, I hate it. I hate when it happens. So, sometimes sometimes I mess up my coffee. It happened on stream sometimes when I get too too excited and too emotional about the markets. Let me put it like this. This is live television, by the way. Let me put it like <laughs> this. Is, let me put it like so. So th this is what happens in our markets when we see these very boring moves to the to the uh, side sideways. And this, by the way, happened in November of 2018. You remember we were at 6k. We were at 6k for so long, and uh, everyone was expecting move to the upside. Some people were expecting move to the downside. And then we completely crashed to 3k. So people are now basically saying that 10k is the new 6k and yet we're to see which side but all in all here is my important point to you it's all about psychology guys it's all about psychology and all about you not losing money and this is really what i want to communicate to you 
Looking at the short term, we do see these uh, ups and downs. I mean, who knows really how it will perform. But also keep in mind this, look at the long term. And at the long term, we're seeing that usually the these cycles become longer. And uh, if you look at the cycle from, for example, 2011 to 2012, let me actually zoom in so that you can see. Uh, th this first um, uh, upside move we see right here, it was way faster than the next one, which is which was way faster than the next one once again. Man, let me see if I can copy this image. Uh, let's see, copy image location, so we don't have to deal with Twitter things. So th this up, uh, this rise right here is way faster than this rise right here, which is way faster than this rise right here. And these are the different bull markets we've seen through through the years. And now, of course, uh, how fast will we move? This is the fastest ascent we've ever seen from 3k to 14k i mean this is very very fast and if we're continuing in this slope it will really really break the pattern because it would basically mean that our bull market right now is faster than any bull market previously if you talk in relative terms if you talk in relative terms compared to the last uh, bull market and basically some people are saying that probably this will be the new all-time high approximately in 20 22 almost 2023 if we are to follow the same kind of pattern where the next bull market is always slower than the last bull market so what does it mean because it's very very difficult to draw any conclusion out of this but this is kind of the point this is kind of the point people who try to draw conclusions usually lose money when you try to draw too many conclusions and you try to bet on some kind of a conclusion at the end of the day, it's all about having a plan at the end of the day, it's all about having a specific plan, a specific set of actions that you follow in different circumstances. And don't just go on feeling, because so many people just shake the chart each and every day, they, their feelings take over, and that is how they make bad moves in the market. This is how you don't lose money. Number one, be educated. Because if you're not educated, you're easily swayed by other people's opinions. You maybe watch someone on YouTube, you maybe watch someone on Twitter, and you're completely swayed by their opinion because i promise you there are some bearish charts i mean like this one we just uh, looked at that this is a triangle and some people are saying we're going to the downside but if you try you will find probably as many bullish charts basically saying that we will bounce here and go upwards as there are bearish charts i mean really uh, there are many people in this space there are many opinions in this space so if you're not yourself educated about the fundamentals and long-term perspective of our industry, you will be easily swayed by the endless stream of predictions, by the endless streams of content and end endless streams of gurus online, on Twitter, on YouTube, and you will basically mess up your whole portfolio if you are not educated and you're just trying to see where the market is going and try to look for tips. So that is number one, education. And I cannot really highlight this enough. You need to be solidly solidly convinced that we're going places in this industry and really you need to keep a blind eye on the short-term movements because short-term movements are always you know we're either gonna go up or we're either gonna go down okay now and of course you can try to assign probabilities if you're good at it but most people are not very good at it that i mean that is the whole thing <laughs> obviously you have professional traders who are working with this each and every day and they know what they're doing and and that is why that is why they can make better predictions than than most people but most people try to make predictions and which basically messes up their messes up their portfolio because they're not here for the long term they're not long term convinced now very important as well is to be 100% calm when things don't go your way because you have a plan that is the that is the whole idea you have a plan maybe you according to your own plan you're supposed to take profit or you're supposed to cut losses whatever it is you need to have a plan because we're gonna have a big move I mean, it doesn't matter which way, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be a big move either up or down. Uh, and no technical analysis will tell you for sure because I mean, look at how many people uh, were talking about the fact that we would never break 10K. When we're going down from 20K, you know, all time high in 2017, we're going down from 20K to 18 to 17. I mean, not many people thought that we will go down all the way to 3K. But if you had the plan, you probably manage that situation. And the plan is always about either the long term or you try to uh, come up with a strategy for taking profits or cutting losses. 
And this is how you don't lose money, because th this is the most important thing to understand, that with emotions, with endless stream of content each and every day from all different places trying to predict the price, you yourself will be in a position where you will be hearing 300 different opinions all the time. And it is very important for you to stay calm and follow the plan. Trust the process. Trust the process, guys. And obviously, what is the process? Some people are asking, okay, Ivan, perfect, but what is the actual process? What kind of process should I choose? I mean, the simplest process is just DCA, dollar cost average. And dollar cost average in a way that you're not um, affected by the market downswings when we go down 80%, 90%, and you're here for the long, long term. I mean, this is the perfect plan. This is maybe the simplest plan you, plan you can have. DCA, dollar cost average, each and every month, transfer $10, $20, $50, 100 however you want, but it should be an amount that you're comfortable with. And that it should be an amount that you can, I mean, really see go down 80% without you basically losing your house without you losing your mortgage so some thoughts guys some thoughts guys big move is coming it can be either up or down classical crypto predictions <laughs> as you will always hear and you need to be prepared now let's move on and talk about uh, vov let's talk about vov and uh, i've actually never played vov myself but uh, I've played RuneScape, and it is kind of like, um, kind of like WoW. Uh, you know, RuneScape is a lot like WoW. I think it's a bit better, but um, I also know many people like WoW. So we have this interesting news that World of Warcraft's virtual gold is seven times more valuable than Venezuela's real, <laughs> real money. <laughs> I mean, you look at the the space of digital assets. You look at the space of uh, the younger generation and how they're approaching digital assets and your eyes really open up. Your eyes really open up and you realize how big this space is getting. And we're only at the start of digital assets and the only at, o, o, on this, of the start, we're only on the start um, of this whole industry exploding in the coming years. And of course, I'm talking about gaming, but gaming is highly connected to crypto because gaming has a lot to do with collectibles with digital money, with digital economies, and obviously crypto goes hand in hand to, with that. So basically what we have right now is that you can get uh, seven times more World of Warcraft, uh, uh, sorry, you, with one World of Warcraft coin, you can basically buy seven Bolivares, <laughs> which is Venezuela's currency. And uh, I mean, you, you sometimes hear the statistics coming out, and at the end of the day, it's all about the fact that, you know, World of Warcraft money has real use case for so many different people across the world. It's a global currency. You have players playing this in, in Europe, in America, in South America, in Africa. This is a world accepted currency in many ways, in many ways. Of course, it is in many ways as well manipulated. I mean, manipulated is controlled by one company. So you realize that at the end of the day, it's not trustless. It's it's not something that you can really rely on for the long term. But for the short term, you realize that this is quite interesting. And in many ways, you can preserve your wealth better in World of Warcraft money than in Venezuelan money. Because World of Warcraft will not face a you know, a, a very urgent economic crisis where they need to print billions of dollars. <laughs> it, they will not face any urgent economic crisis where they need to save the economy because they made bad political mistakes. I mean, yes, inflation also happens in games. I know that firsthand. I know that firsthand from RuneScape that inflation also happens in games and, and gold is becoming less and less worth in games, but it all depends on the game design, how many money thing, things you have in your game. So, so therefore, you also need to keep in mind that, hey, I'm not saying this is for long term, but for short term, I mean, why not? If you live in Venezuela, you can somehow get uh, World of Warcraft gold. You could actually, this could potentially save your life. I mean, to be honest with you, if you have a time horizon of one, two months, this could save your life. If, if it's easier to get World of Warcraft coins than to get Bitcoin, because in many countries, it might be easier to do this than to actually get Bitcoin. And um, the reason is because in many countries, you do see government uh, really being desperate right now. I mean, Venezuela is one of one of these countries, because when the government is desperate, they will of course try all the ways to clamp down on capital flight. And Bitcoin is famous for you know being this uh, this uh, this vehicle where people can store wealth and.
and uh, where they can do whatever they want with their money. While uh, World of Warcraft gold coins is kind of more innovative. I mean, people are not thinking about it as capital flight <laughs> to the same extent. So that is why I think, you know, it's it's very fun. I mean, young younger generation is really, really killing it. I mean, they, they are taking over the world. And we need to be looking at them to, in order to see where we're heading as a civilization. Now, we have some interesting news from... Uh, from the SEC that I want to talk to you next, but first let me let me drink some coffee. Where is it being used? Asks Coino Class. It's being used in the game. <laughs> It's being used in the game to buy skins, to buy assets, to buy armor, to buy mounts. Like, you know, you can fly these horses in the sky in, in World of Warcraft. So it's all about in-game usage. And, you know, I do understand why it's valuable. Because, once again, I have played a lot. I have played a lot of RuneScape in the past. And when you play a game such as RuneScape, you realize that you've invested so much time, energy, and commitment into the game. And your assets are really, really valuable to you. And basically, the gold in the game is also, it has real value to people. I mean, don't kid that. If you haven't played any games, I do understand that it might, it might sound insane, but it has a lot of value to people who are playing them. And so that is why they also have real, real world value value on international markets that <laughs> you can actually you can actually buy uh, gold in games with real money obviously game developers in many cases want to prohibit that they don't really like real world trading but it still happens anyway what's happening in the chat how much rum is in your coffee <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what happens when you when you talk about uh, World of Warcraft, the gold having value. People think you're insane. And hey, in many cases, we're talking about stuff that are so bleeding edge and we're really really at the edge of humanity changing itself so i don't blame you if you think that this is strange it's like you know people spending thousands and thousands of dollars on fortnite skins i mean this is kids 11 12 years old spending so much time on fortnite why are they doing that because they have a whole new worldview that you and i don't have we i mean i would never spend a lot of money on some kind of skin in the game it doesn't even help you in the game it doesn't even make you stronger in the game but still these kids man they are insane they're buying so much stuff of these digital assets okay so this is not a joke this is not a joke <laughs> but it is funny i know it is funny okay sec is back in the house sec is back in the crypto space making some bold statements now there is this video i don't want to play it because i know cnbc they don't like when you play their stuff but basically, the head of the SEC, Jay Clayton, the chairman, the chairman of the SEC, Jay Cl Clayton. By the way, I, I, if you want, you can watch it on your own. I can just link it in the chat and you can watch it on your own. But he was basically asked about the fact that, hey, do we see any progress? Do we see any progress with... Uh, with Bitcoin ETFs. Are these guys trying to do Bitcoin ETFs? Are they getting better? I mean, do, are you more and more convinced? And turns out he is more convinced. Turns out he is getting there. He's saying that we are making good progress. We're making good progress when it comes to ETF and probably soon, soon it might be a reality. But at the same time, he also says that, hey, we still have many question marks. Although we're making progress, still we're asking about manipulation. We're still very concerned about many different things. But all in all, hey, I, I think it was quite positive. Check the link I sent in the chat and uh, and see for yourself. I thought all in all his sentiment was, I mean, not at all negative. It's it's just the usual one, you know, the the usual the usual concerns about manipulation, this and that. And I mean, I do understand why. I do understand why because we really need to get our stuff together in the crypto space. I mean, just look at this. I've showed it several times, but look at this. You do have two different websites that should be showing statistics about the markets. You do have coinmarketcap.com, then you have openmarketcap.com. And you realize that, I mean, they're showing vastly different numbers. I mean, insanely different numbers. We've, we've looked at this in the past, but you know, the volume for 24 hours on CoinMarketCap is 17 billion. On OpenMarketCap, it is 1.4 billion. I mean, we're not even close. This is order of magnitude difference. I mean, coin market cap is showing volume 10x, more than 10x compared to open market cap. So 
I mean, what, what is really the truth here? So I do understand with all of the exchanges we have that are very, very questionable, and let's not kid ourselves, we do have a lot of questionable exchanges. I'm not going to name any names, but there are many. I mean, it's over 20, I would say there are tens, there are tens of different questionable exchanges. And you realize that, I mean, when when you are SEC and you're looking at this, and if you if we just try, because whenever you say that, hey, whenever SEC says that crypto is maybe manipulated, people say, but gold is also manipulated and everything else is also manipulated. So why are you just pointing out crypto? But uh, let's just forget that. I mean, let's not. I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not true. But even if uh, if we think that SEC is one hundred percent fair. I mean, they're not 100% fair, but let's just imagine that we have an entity such as the SEC, they're 100% fair, and they see this, and they see these discrepancies on, on different stat statistic sites. I mean, obviously, it would wake a concern. No question about that. It would wake a big concern. And uh, therefore, I, I, I think we should just be seeing this as way to improve, because we have way to go. I mean, this whole industry has so, uh, so far ahead of it. I mean, it has so many improvements improvements to still implement and we're all participating in it and also you realize that it is also a good sign because we are in these early days i mean we are these lunatics this maniacs sitting here at 8 a.m every single day central p.m summertime and we're talking about these imaginary coins imaginary coins on the internet who knows how many of them really get traded on a daily basis because we have 10 different <laughs> 10 different data points from 10 different sources but uh, we're still moving forward i mean we're still moving forward and the good thing is now when you look at the financial media, you look at, for example, CNBC, you look at Bloomberg, we've made some good progress because they are no longer explaining what Bitcoin is. They're no longer trying to explain to their viewers, for example, on CNBC, Fox, on Bloomberg, they're not trying to explain what Bitcoin is anymore. Instead, they're just talking about that Bitcoin is needed in your portfolio in case uh, things really go south in the traditional markets. Now we are at the stage where it is being discussed as a as a very, very viable uh, asset class that you need to have in your portfolio, by the way. And um, it should also it should also be mathematically verified uh, by the portfolio theory. And we still need more data for that to be 100 percent true. So what, what do I mean? Well, I basically mean that. Mathematically, ideally, we need to show to different um, uh, to, to different asset managers that uh, Bitcoin is actually not correlated with the stock market. Bitcoin is maybe even negatively correlated with the stock market, or it has good enough um, negative correlation to be a, a viable asset in your portfolio so that the risk actually goes down in your portfolio as a whole. So, I mean, all of these different things we will have better and better data the more years Bitcoin survives and the more years Bitcoin dominates. Why is it so? Well, because right now we don't even have data how Bitcoin performs in a recession. We don't even know if, I mean, will it follow the stock market? Will it, will it not follow the stock market? Will it be seen as a safe haven? Will it not be seen as a safe haven? I mean, if you just look fundamentally, you look theoretically, it should be seen as a, as a safe haven. But practically, because at the end, it's all about practicality. Will people treat it as a safe haven? I think so. I do think so. But we need mathematical proof. We need data. We need imperative proofs. So that is why uh, many people are still waiting. And I, I'm, of course, talking about these guys who are managing, managing wealth, wealth managers. They're still waiting a bit with Bitcoin because they need more proof that it is actually decreasing risk as a whole in their portfolio, according to portfolio theory and the cal calculations you do when you construct your portfolio. Anyway, and that, that is, of course, has to do with correlation with other asset classes. Okay, guys, let's move on. I have so many topics today. This industry is insane. I mean, that, that is why I always have so many topics. But <laughs> the next topic is about on-chain incorporation. Basically, right now, there, there are many problems with, uh, with uh, startups, for example. I mean, let's imagine that you and I, we invest in a startup and... Uh, we will be added to the cap table, capitalization table. Basically, there is there, there will be an Excel sheet saying how much money we have invested and, and um, how much uh, um, shares we own in the company. And you realize that when you look at the startup world and you look at the world of investing, especially angel investing and VC investing, there is this thing, for example, called liquidation 
preference. Liquidation preference is very important because if you invest in a company as a venture capital venture capital fund or as an angel investor, you go with your own money, you invest in a startup, you want to be sure that you will actually be getting your money back before other investors. I mean, you can try to get a deal where you are basically preferred if there is a liquidation event. So let's say that we invest in a company and the company sells for less for, for lower valuation that you and I invested in at. So let's, let's say we invest at 100 million valuation, the company sells for only 50 million valuation. This means that everyone will not get their money back, but some people will get their money back and it all depends on uh, uh, liquidation preference. Who will be getting money back first in case company sells for lower value than we invested in? And basically, for the, I mean, you specify it in, um, in the legal documents. You specify it in legal documents and um, what Balaji writes here, he's the former CTO of Coinbase, by the way, what he he writes here is basically that all of the all of these different rules for example who should, should get the money first is just in many ways instructions it's just in many ways instructions that we can put on the blockchain incorporations of comp incorporation of companies should be done on the blockchain and then liquidation preference and other rules and other instructions that we want to put into the legal system should also be on the blockchain so that there is no way to mess it up. And I think this is very important. I, th I think this is very important, important thought process that we need to have. I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, this will not replace the courts. We're not replacing the courts in any way, but we're just making this more transparent and we're re removing a lot of ambiguity and we're making it easier for everyone to verify their liquidation preference and ensure that at least the smart contract is, is understanding this situation correctly and everyone is on the same page i mean people can still scam you people can still scam you with the, with the equity that you should be getting and th that is why of course a lot of the, the business for example in silicon valley is based on trust when you invest in a company i mean yes you do have all of the documents saying that you have the right to the equity but still if you're not if you're not careful you can be scammed out of your equity and i think you should check out a guy i mean man i really love this guy i i'm reading his book right now i'm reading his book he he's called jason calacanis let's see jason cala Canis. He's amazing. I mean, he has this podcast called This Week in Startups. I mean, if you are into like business, oops, oops, oops. If you're into business and stuff, watch this because you can be scammed out of your equity. I, I watched this uh, uh, yesterday about uh, this guy basically explaining how a startup called TopTal scammed all their investors of their equity. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. And, and, the, and, the, and the reason they were able to do that is because ambiguity in corporate law, ambiguity in how different people saw the situation. And basically, I mean, on the legal, uh, uh, when it comes to legal details, this guy who r runs TopTal, and they are basically like a billion dollar company now, uh, basically they received a lot of money into their startup. And the idea was that when they raise more money, then everyone will get their equity. Everyone, everyone who invested previously will get their equity, but they never raised more money. So nobody got their equity. <laughs> I think this is this is insane. But that is why so much is based on trust in Silicon Valley. And that is why incorporation on the blockchain would solve so many issues. Uh, but all in all, check out Jason. Check check out This Week in Startups if you like business. I mean, he doesn't really like uh, coins. Uh, he, uh, he, he is a bit negative on Bitcoin, this guy. So <laughs> don't watch him for crypto content. But he knows his stuff on, on business and on investing. Okay, then we also have Apple. I, I, I will skip it because it is a bit old news. This is from September, but the interesting thing with Apple is that they do have their event. P please write his name, says Bitcoin. Man, I just go to This Week in Startups on, um, on YouTube. You will find him. You will find him. So Apple, they will have their event. Probably we will get the new iPhone today. Man, I really need the new iPhone. I, I really need, let, let me show it to you. I have this broken thing. It, it's really insane. But uh, I, you see, I have this, uh, this uh, what is it called? Like it, it broke right here. How do you say it? This crack. I have this crack in the glass and then I, I needed to put some, some tape right here to make it work still. So I really need a new iPhone. So I hope it will be good. Uh, looking at uh, Tether, we do have Tether Juan, Juan or Juan or Juan. Not Juan. Tether, Tether Yuan launching uh, on Ethereum blockchain. 
And this is very important because obviously China doesn't want you to take the money from China if you live in China. Uh, so they're really, really, ch I think in many ways they're challenging the Chinese establishment because now, because now you can transfer however you want with, uh, with Ethereum blockchain and you can transfer Yuan out of the country. I think it's very, very interesting. And also I think Bitfinex in many ways, I mean, they're doing some very brave things actually i mean credit where credit is due but uh, doing a yuan a stable coin uh, on ethereum blockchain and really targeting that market basically saying hey guys we're coming after the chinese market uh, and we hope they will use our system a lot so they, they can do worldwide transactions in the currency uh it's i mean i think it's very interesting <laughs> we're gonna follow we're gonna follow it anyway guys anyway guys what's happening in the chat what is happening in the chat? We've been going on for uh, for quite some time. 35 minutes. You got 35 minutes Ivan on Tech rant. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm running a uh, S... Oh, do you mean the, like, the, the minor? Like, the S, uh, S minors? Nice. Tether arbitrage exchanges rates on currency. Um... Maybe it's a good use case. Uh, I, I'm not sure how you would do it. But uh, also, I mean, realize that um, Tether will not be one yuan, just like Tether is not always one uh, USD. So there is also this uh, complexity that, you know, even though they're stable coins, they're always a bit below or above. Sometimes they're exactly the same, but uh, I mean, most probably they're either above or below. Hey, Zama, Zama, good to have you here. Uh, good to have you here. Why so, so hyped of iPhone? Because I've tried Androids and they're all crap. I mean, guys, I'm sorry i know that i will get a lot of hate but look i was an android user from the start my first smartphone was an android it was the samsung it was Sal samsung galaxy s2 then i got an htc and honestly guys they're all crap i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> i know many people get very passionate about this i know so people get passionate about this and although i mean yes hardware specs android is better but look hardware specs don't matter if the whole i mean as a whole it just works worse i don't care if it is like better hardware specs if it as a whole is a worse product maybe now maybe now android is better and look i was very into android because my first uh, my first uh, apps were on android so I, I was an android developer i learned uh, i learned how to develop uh, mobile apps on android first but then you realize that i mean it just i, I just like it more I just like it more. So, yeah. So, don't take it personal. I know many people take this thing personal. They they have this war, you know, Android versus Apple versus iPhone. But, hey, man, if you like your Android, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. And I'm sure I have some things that you think are crap. Maybe you think iPhone is crap. I'm completely fine with that. You can tell me that iPhone is crap in the, in the comment section. I will not take it uh, uh, take it in, in a bad way. But it's just ridiculous. Some people, they're so passionate about this, you know, Android versus iOS, man, be passionate about other things. Be passionate about something else. I mean, really, this is not the thing to be passionate about, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't really care. I just like uh, iPhone more, so I hope the one they release today is, is going to be good. Android is far superior. Yeah, see, good, good. Android, if you like Android, good for you, good for you. I, I'm not here to start this never-ending war. But also, I, I feel like nowadays this uh, a war between iOS and Android, it's it's calmed down a bit. I mean, people were more more crazier in the past. I remember in 2013 or something, you told that you like Android or, or iPhone, people would really lose their mind. People would really lose their mind. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the price, yeah, I mean, the price is, uh, yeah, yeah, the price is the only issue. But uh, at the end of the day, like, I buy it for two years, and then I enjoy my phone for two years, and, and that's it. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, th th this, is, this is my position. <laughs> this is my position. My biggest problem with Android is the scrolling. It's just bad. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean... I, I I remember a lot of issues from my old, but look, I did I haven't had any any Android since like 2014 or something, because I had a Samsung S2. That that was my first kind of no no no. I you know my first smartphone was HTC. It was a HTC. Hey, thanks man, thanks man. Was it like HTC? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. It was something HTC. It was the silver. Oh, late. I know. I 
man, I will give you some nostalgia trip. I know it was HTC Legend. I know it. I know it. This was my first smartphone. Uh, it was. I mean, I'm telling you, I I I was a Android user. This was my first smartphone. Man, it was so amazing in the beginning. I remember when I got it. I remember when I got it. And uh, I, yeah, it must have been like 2011 maybe, if this was released in 2010. I remember w when I got it and you saw the screen and the touch and the touch and you can scroll. My mind was blown. My mind was absolutely blown. So this was my, this was my first one. Then I had another HTC. It was uh, a, it was a big fat one. Uh, HTC, uh, I don't remember what's even called, but uh, I, it was like a bigger one. And yeah, and then I switched to to uh, iPhone. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we have already been been uh, rambling for quite some time. Amazing to have you here. Amazing to be here with you, talk about all kinds of things. And I'll see you all tomorrow at 8 a.m. Central European Summertime. Have a great, great day. Enjoy your day. Let me know if you enjoyed the stream, by the way. Please write in the comment section if you enjoyed it, if you learned something. Uh, and... Um, See you all tomorrow. I mean, guys, enjoy your, enjoy your, what is it? Tuesday. Enjoy your Tuesday and goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Smash the like, smash the bell, smash the share button, share the stream and goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye.